Greg Batten taking on Liam White in the loser's side round two of the British Open. And he's going to kick off with a dry break. Race to seven, 50 minutes on the match clock. These two ultimate pool professionals. How about Gary Clark though, Simon Webb? That was that was a pretty special finish that he he took out there against Neil Raybone and just goes to show, doesn't it, how brutal this field can be. You do that in the first round losers match against Neil Raybone, pretty tough draw as it was. Well played, Gary. Yeah, Sean Story next, pal. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> tough, but it just shows you the, the, the tour. And obviously, we've got 64 professionals here and 64 qualifiers. And yet, you know, I don't know what the numbers are for the opening round. You know, there's an awful lot of professionals that have been beaten by the qualifiers. And it just shows you the strength and depth in the pool world. You know, we've got another two professionals here in the loser's side of the draw. You know, it's and that bit you mentioned, Gary, I thought that that was a tough match for him. You know, he's playing a really tough match player in Neil Raybone who didn't have his best match but be honest there but everything that Gary had to go out was tough everything he had in front of him was tough and he just had to keep grinding and he took out a couple of naughty finishes along the way and you know that final frame was everything that you get with ultimate pool it had the, the match clock it had the drama it had the twists and it it had a it's a completely different dynamic to the finish that is incredibly exciting and the players that embrace that really entertain us and that was a uh, really one of my favorite matches of the day if not the my favorite match of the day tough four nil he'll come again in another event whereas gary straight back in action against sean as you already said surprising miss early here by liam that was a not a good start for him had greg with me on commentary a little bit earlier on after he lost his opening match and he said that he didn't really do anything wrong he played he felt he played very well in his opening match which just shows you the the strength in the in the field tough opening loss for him played against Ryan Francis and 10-8 defeat for him Greg won in the losers round one by beating Stuart Colclough 7-1. Comfortable victory for him and hopefully he played himself into a little bit of form in, in doing so. Yeah, like I say, I don't think he, he felt like he didn't do too much wrong in the opening match. He just lost a high quality game. The hardest thing about going into the losers side in round one is just the mental strength that you're still in the tournament and you've got to, but you've got to go and win six matches to get yourself back into into contention back into the last 16 it, it's just a tough place to be obviously the every round you go in the winner's side it's the it's a round or two less you have to play in the loser's side so it does make a huge difference mm. put it into perspective as he's on a simple eight ball here to win the opening frame so punish that miss from Liam White was a 10-8 defeat to Lewis Roberts for Liam White, which is why he sat in that chair. Yeah, completely agree. Not the best of breaks here from, from Liam. Does have a so fabulous unlike break. So unlike him. Yeah. So unlike him. Seemed to bounce off that front ball. Yeah, two reds in the eight ball. Barely moved. This could be a drawn out frame because of it. positive side talking about the kind of mental side of the game but the positive side for both these guys here this is the final match of the day for them so this is you win get yourself into tomorrow go and get yourself a good night's sleep come back and try and you know dig deep again tomorrow and, and see how far you can go in the tournament or please please don't lose don't lose well, don't lose. yeah <laughs> you've got to spin it to the positive haven't you but it's yeah. not the match we saw previously with Gary and Neil it was a case of having to win and then kind of get yourself set to go again for another tough match before the night's out obviously it's getting pretty late here and uh, some of the guys have played a lot of pool already I think it's been a fabulous opening day though 
the, really enjoyed it the, the change to the races to 10 the double elimination you know the open style of it i like seeing the the, the the amateur qualifiers come through and amateur's the wrong word because i think a lot of the qualifiers that come through are you know certainly some of them are a, a sort of early stage pro level obviously some of them are gonna have to go and earn their right to be you know in that top tier if you like but certainly pro level players that have come through It's got that Friday night feel in players in Newcastle under Lyme. Just pop through to the bar there to uh, get myself a Pepsi Max and a 12, keep myself going. Athlete's diet at this stage <laughs> of the uh, of the evening. But uh, yeah, definitely a real sort of positive vibe. The the drinks are flowing and and yeah, people are having a good time. But you're only having a good time. <laughs> If you're safely in tomorrow, yeah, that's it. Might be some drowning sorrows as well for players that have lost, lost, and straight out of the tournament. Worth pointing out, of course, there is an, an amateur event for the amateurs that have qualified through. Yeah, which is a lovely addition, actually. Gets it, underway later in the weekend. So I suppose for the for the pros, you know, at least you know they're, they're almost used to this by now. You know, you lose two matches. That's sort, that's sort of that you you kind of almost indoctrinated at this level to, to doing that whereas the amateurs I mean, it's very hard to, and well what I should say is it's probably quite easy to lose two matches against some of the best players in the world they do have that extra competition amongst themselves in theory should be some some more even matches and all the rest of it and I think it's a great addition for them as yeah. uh, Greg runs aground tough shot yeah I think the way the format set up is, is fantastic in that regard yeah amateurs have almost you know a second bite at it in the in the amateur event as well obviously a lot of them will believe they can actually lift the main prize here which is again you know, points to the strength in the pool world that was full-blooded from Liam he was trying to play the combination there he knew the odds of him leaving a yellow one was slim but he was trying to open it up and go there and he hasn't left a an easy ball on in the yellows but I think this will sneak past the eight ball to right centre it's just a poor angle to get on the next ball it's a nice pop but he's going to need another this is tough he is on the one to left centre though he is the one by the two reds he's on and he knew that he knew the cue ball was going into that red and was going to accept what he's got this time it does the natural hit the yellow four ball, half ball, or does he leave on? Yeah, catches it three quarter ball, which is absolutely perfect. Yeah, he will take that. Yes, please. Yeah, it's ideal ball goes through the reds to bottom left so perfect to just drop this in on and off and on a fairly routine eight ball yeah nicely played by Greg again it may just sort of be you know a sort of easy answer to my theory posited about match confidence but certainly looks the way that Greg looks the sharper and the happier out there at the moment. Carl Sutton, Matty Challen, Dave Arnold will take on Connor Jones, Jack Whelan, John Rowe, Josh Kane, Ronan McCarthy, Scott Gillespie, Carl Morris, Lewis Roberts, Sean Chipperfield, Scott Pope, Eddie Barker, Scott Yardley, Reese Townsend, all qualify a match up there. Christy Caulfield, Luke Gilbert, and Ian Alley versus Chris Melling. Wow, some good matchups there, isn't there? Very exciting. Worth pointing out if you win that match. Well, I believe that's uh, is that it's winners' qualification the next round. Yeah, they've two. So anybody that wins wins from the winners' side tomorrow makes the last sixteen tomorrow night. They'll be in the draw for the last sixteen. The draw, obviously, eight players go through on the winners' side, 
eight players through on the losers' side, and obviously losers play the winners. So yeah, two matches required for anybody that is in that 10 o'clock session tomorrow morning. All fun and games. coming up here for Liam he wouldn't mind making both but he's not going to he would have loved for both to have dropped there he would be giving him a great chance as it is Greg needs to find a way to clear that red Very clever. <coughs> now is he going to look for a loss of turn of his own? He's flat to that right side rail, which means he can't really do loads with the cue ball. He'd love to be able to hide it somewhere, but he's already taken one of Liam's reds off the table. He's looking to do another here. Yeah, and it looks like he... Well, actually, the way he's played that, he wasn't trying to take the red off, I think. Maybe he was just trying to sit it right on top and make it a really horrible ball for Liam. Yeah, in the end, he's, he's not really achieved that. And this is a gettable chance now for Liam White. It's not easy, but it's gettable. Couldn't have come out any better for Danger Mouse. And he's going to get himself on the board. Liam White's break. Training by two frames to one. Well, Liam's break woes continue. 
such a surprise, really. And they're not, I mean, he's normally got such a huge weapon of a break, but it's just not working for him. And it's been a really tough start to the match, really, in terms of layouts. This is a tough one. He's trying to open it all up. It's actually it's one shot, really. The red by the yellow does go right centre, so you see him aiming for the, the eight ball. He doesn't need to do too much with this either. Just a fairly full contact. Just pop it. The two yellows just go down the table. The red doesn't move too much and just separates from the eight ball. He just needs it to go to the bottom left. It doesn't need to overhit this. Just enough so it goes bottom left and then the rest all go. That hasn't worked. Yeah, it couldn't really have come out much worse, actually, for him. stuff from Greg works it all out very good visit this mm, he's okay I think that's not ideal though yeah, he's got some traffic I, as long as the eight ball goes in the same pocket I think he can just float this natural don't know whether he's it might be full ball into the yellow off the bottom cushion and if that's the case then the eight ball might not go anywhere the fact that he was just having a quick glance does the eight ball go through the gap into the center it does go top left but that wouldn't be a nice shot yeah he's in it's not simple this really tough eight ball and you can tell just in the intensity that Greg turns away he knows that was a big shot
days though it may be Greg Batten looking to break the back of this match that was a lovely shot looks by far and away a more confident player and even at this as I say relatively early juncture still you know, not even half of the match clock played it may already look a long way back for Liam White here. That's pretty good again. Just wonder if the red on the left side rail plays big at all here. It's okay if he hits it. The only thing it could, if he hits it badly, he could snooker himself with it, but oh, he just he floats by it. it. Nice. So it was just one of those. He just had to execute. But you can tell he, it's not, sometimes you, obviously the scoreline says 4 1, but you could just the way the game's gone, he's looked the stronger of the two players. He looks more confident. Body language is good. Well, it's the best split that Liam's had today, or in this match, but. It's a dry break this time, and it's still not an absolutely brilliant split. There's still problems. They just they exploded a little bit better. That's not worked out too well for him. Stays awkward. I wonder if he'll consider the double. I'm not sure he can play it here. Maybe if he feels he can and could straighten it up, then he might be able to play the double off the yellow. And that actually then opens up the right centre pocket. You can really straighten these up. And I just tried to play it clean and makes it clean. It's because he was just top side of it. If he was a, a turn lower down, he could probably have played the shot that I was talking about. But if he tried to straighten it up there, he would have ended up getting the double kiss. I actually think he was playing the cannon on the eight ball there, because that's what he was kind of pointing at. But that's not worked. But he's still in good shape here. Yeah, he's definitely got options. Yeah. Definitely got options. Do you think he could play the red off the yellow here? The yellow looks a little bit high for it, but if he just would just open up the red for him. I think that'll be the plan. It's just a little bit awkward, isn't it, with the position of that yellow? Because your question is, is how much does it improve the red? It has to move a, a, a decent amount, doesn't it? It probably needs to come on and off the side cushion and bump the red out. That's the issue. Yeah. I wonder if he's looking at here to come into the red and yellow from this one. Yeah, that's why he's, he's told us, isn't he? It's absolutely... Yeah, that, that and, will do. And leaving the other one in the middle of the table was huge there because it meant he had a ball to be on even if he wasn't on the one he was playing into. Yeah, the 
way that he's played this is nice because he can get below the eight ball and take it up the table. Still blocked off to the bottom two corner pockets. has been a very, very good visit to the table from Greg Batten. Very nice. Yeah, starting to look really positive for Greg. He's playing some really nice stuff. Super. really important visit here for Liam he's got to get something going still got half the match left on the match clock but he's got to find Greg's playing so well now that he's just got to find finishes grinding out a frame is, is probably enough to get him going but he's not going to get this you know, turn this match around without taking out some first visits and that's another one that's going to get away from him be really disappointed with the level he's played in this match so far just wonder if that previous defeat which wasn't that long ago just lingering Greg Batten is back in business It's comfy, it's clean. I just look at the body language. Liam hasn't really looked positive in the match, and I think you're right. I think he's come off the back of a defeat and he's straight into this match, and it's a tough place to be. Whereas Greg, you know, he lost early. He had about four or five hours between losing to having to play his first loses round match which he won and then he comes into this one on the positive of winning I um, managed to cast my over that eye over that one for a little while four ten nines in one half of the draw there. yeah that was all from the bottom half of the draw as well Jack Whelan who we've seen very little of today because he had a, a walkover win in his first round so he turned up wins 10-1 and leaves his great day for, for yeah, Jack no, Whelan nice work if you can get it yeah absolutely is a one of the big favorites for the tournament of course and a very good day for him the other player on that list I just want to mention is Scott Yardley. I think it's a fantastic day for Scott Yardley. Two really good wins for him. Oh, hell of a to day. Make his make his way through to winners round two and two wins away from the last 16. Of course, the other thing that happens here, and all the players that are one on that list there, they get themselves a, a couple of stages deeper in the loser's side. You know, it just makes a big difference. You know, they, even if they turn up tomorrow morning and lose, they, they're starting in the loser's, loser's side at, at further along. And, Makes the challenge a lot but easier. Oh, Liam really needed this. Yeah, just under hit that one though quite significantly. All of a sudden this has gone from being looking like it was going to be simple and done to... He's got to come up with a big shot here. Needs a gap. He's got one. He's going to get it. Yeah, he's played that well. It's 
noticing your gap here. Oh, he's, he's got okay. one. He's okay. <laughs> Keyball's doing a lot of mileage there on the last couple of shots, which would have worried him, but you could tell he's got a little bit more freedom in the in the shot there, the last few shots in that one in in terms of you know, some players and you know, call it the loser's stroke, but Cue ball. Oh, it gets saved. God, how's that dry? Yeah. How's it dry? How did the cue ball not get kicked in here? I look certain for a, a second. And then it was tracking the top cushion as well. That's in without that nudge. Pinball. Yeah, another opportunity, though, for Liam. Obviously, he'll still feel like he's not really got a way back into this match, but... Just got to keep taking them out and seeing where you're at. That's a four-man team, if ever there was. The P, Houdini, Jezza, and the Rocket. Extension call. Just wondering at what point you start thinking about things from Greg Batten's perspective. You know, this is a Greg Batten break. If Liam can find the finish, and he's got the bad angle here, actually, so he's far from certain for it, but can he turn it around if he takes the next one out? All of a sudden, it's 6-4. And you never know. of this game is how quickly it can change. Just. And this one must go, but it's very awkward. How do you get from here to the, the eight ball? That is a very good question. This could be his last shot in this year's tournament. One cushion, two cushion, three cushion. Oh, what, a sh what a shot. Shot, Liam. Factor in the fact he's out if that doesn't work. That's incredible. Still has to make this, of course. Oh, no. Oh, no. To play such a good shot to get yourself on the eight ball, that is... I mean, Liam livid. Yeah, and, and like I just said, you know, this that's for 6-3. He has the break, and players think in terms of they're going to make a break clearance. All of a sudden, it's 6-4. And that's all of a sudden when Greg's going to start thinking about it, and now he's just got an absolute roadmap to wrap the match up. Oh, brutal. Yeah, just he's not been at the races in this match, and I think that's just the the tournament really the nature of it you know going straight out of the loser's side at the winner's side straight into the loser's side and having to dig deep and he's not found it and Liam will come back he's a very good player he'll respond he'll be back pro series in a few weeks time but Greg Batten four balls away from from victory Liam White will regret that last eight ball, I think. Well, what I think he'll regret more from that match was the slow start. It just gave Greg Batten that little bit too much time to settle.